All right. Uh, yeah. Good morning. Once again, uh, the uh, intention of this session, uh, which will run for one hour, is to cover some basics on terrestrial navigation. Uh, I know we may have a slightly eclectic group here. Uh, some of uh, you who may be in the first year of BSc, some of you who have uh, who are in third year. So bear with me as I run you through some uh, fundamentals, uh, so that uh, uh, we kind of refresh ourselves on uh, on uh, what navigation is about. Uh, for the moment, we will restrict ourselves to terrestrial navigation basics. Okay, uh, before we start, um, uh, I request you to mute all your mics and uh, whenever you want to speak up uh, uh, please remember to unmute and then introduce yourself uh, and then ask your question and uh, of course if, if there is some connectivity issue please feel free to uh, pump in your uh, chat questions uh, and we have moderators who will uh, push them up to me and uh, as we run through the slides, I will try to give a few breaks uh, so that we can have, uh, the whole intention is that we will have an interactive session. Okay, uh, let me run you through the learning objectives here. They are very simple. Um, I intend to run over the concepts and principles. And uh, for this particular session, we will not be doing any uh, numericals. We will save that for the next ones. And uh, we will run over some uh, basic fundamentals, uh, shape of the earth, the meaning of great circles, small circles. Almost all of you will know what these are, but we just want to run those definitions uh, through our heads uh, once again. And of course, uh, datum references, uh, coordinates of latitude, longitude, uh, uh, directional datum references, course, uh, heading, bearing, reading uh, uh, of the compass, uh, transit bearings. Uh, these may seem very basic, but uh, uh, the feedback we receive from uh, company interviews is that uh, some of you guys forget uh, these when, you, uh, when you're facing up with one of the superintendents. Um, and then sometimes it gets a little embarrassing for all of us. So we will uh, kind of refresh through all these uh, concepts once again. Uh, compass errors uh, and uh, position lines, uh, meaning of position circles. Uh, and of course, the concept of distance, uh, the nautical mile, DLAT, uh, D long departure. So, nothing very complicated, uh, nothing uh, frightening. It is more of a refresher. Now, when I said fundamentals of navigation, at any given time when you are on a ship uh, uh, or indeed navigating anywhere, there are three questions uh, that you need to be able to answer where you are where you are headed and uh, the distance that you have traveled and the distance that you need to travel. So basically positional, directional and spatial uh, awareness. This, this is uh, at all times you need to be in control of this. Um, of course, we know how it is done on ships. Uh, some of you have sailed on ships and uh, you are well aware. I will leave you with another fundamental thought here. As you gather information on uh, these three, uh, three, these three fundamentals, you need to remember that they, for every source of information, there should be two independent systems to measure it. So that applies to where you are, that applies to where you are headed, and that applies also to uh, the distance that you are covered. Now. At this point, let me stop and ask you to think a little bit about it, especially for those of you who have sailed on ships. Uh, what two independent systems can you think of uh, when you are talking of directional uh, information? Gyro compass, gyro compass, magnetic compass. Gyro compass, magnetic compass. Are they independent systems? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Yes, they are. Excellent. So we are meeting that uh, requirement. How about uh, distance? Charts. Charts. Very good. Yes. Sorry? Distance table also we can use. Did you say speed log? Doppler, Doppler log. log. Doppler log. And uh, GPS log. Two. Okay, you have two independent systems of uh, measuring your uh, distance. Now, uh, out in the deep blue sea, not on the coast, please answer the first question. Where am I? What are the two sources of information that you have? 
So in the lat and long coordinates, lat and long. Yeah, lat and long is your your uh, address that that is where you are. But what is the method of finding out where you are? Out at sea. GPS. Sir. GPS. And celestial. Celestial. celestial or terrestrial side. Okay. Celestial. Celestial See. objects. Terrestrial also we can. Okay, uh, really, we, we, I don't care uh, uh, which systems you use, uh, but remember that there have to be two independent systems. You can use a celestial um, plus this, or if you have DECA, uh, in the days that there were DECA and Loran, or, and the, the moment you come down to just one position fixing system, then you are violating the fundamental uh, of navigation. I need you to think about it because um, many of you may be wondering, you know, uh, with your experience at sea, why on earth? are we studying navigation terrestrial and celestial navigation especially the reason is this we still don't have an independent system uh, to back up the gps so that is the reason uh, we are studying navigation so let's move on okay uh, how many of you are familiar with what the shape of the earth is Excellent. So, what exactly do you mean by spheroid? I mean, spheroid and ellipsoid for, the, for all practical purposes is exactly the same. So, what's the difference between a spheroid and a sphere? Uh, three dimensional, we say. Sphere is also three dimensional. It is bulge out. Yeah. It is bulging out at the equator. So the equatorial radius or diameter is slightly, very slightly in case of Earth, uh, only about 42 kilometers higher than the polar diameter. Okay. And therefore, technically, it is uh, an ellipsoid or an oblate spheroid. Now, just by way of additional information, it is not as perfect as we think it is. Uh, there's a lot of rough edges around the Earth's surface, mountains, valleys, ocean seabeds. So it is actually a geoid when you're talking of three-dimensional uh, position fixing. Uh, this becomes important um, and we need to use certain datums. But yeah, for the moment, we will just deal with spherical or ellipsoidal for the purpose of understanding the, na the basics of navigation. Okay, uh, that brings me to the next. Uh, see, there are a bunch of imaginary lines. They don't actually exist if you if you go around on Earth, but uh, these are the imaginary lines that we draw on the Earth. Uh, we start with great circles. Any anybody wants to take a shot at defining what a great circle is? So, great circles are the circles which pass uh, the plane of which passes through the center of the sphere. Brilliant! Excellent. That is. Any circle drawn on the surface of a sphere which shares a center with the sphere. Okay. And uh, one feature, uh, you know, you would have done your spherical trigonometry in your nautical uh, mathematics. When three arcs of great circles uh, cut each other to form a triangle, you have what is known as a spherical triangle. And uh, you, because you will be solving uh, problems and numericals based on this. Now, another thing that a great circle does, obvious, is that it divides a sphere into two equal halves. Agreed? Yes, sir. Okay. This should be fairly easy and straightforward. Small circle is anything that is not a great circle, isn't it? Yes. Yes, sir. As simple as that, and uh, some people have the impression that they have to be parallel to the equator, not necessarily. A small circle is any circle that you draw on the surface of a sphere whose center or whose plane does not pass through the center of the sphere. And of course, it divides it into two unequal sections. Uh, that is obvious. So, can we move ahead? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, again, 
basic geometry, I mean geography, we we know that the Earth spins on its own axis. The axis, right? Uh, the axis of rotation is uh, an imaginary line that joins the North Pole to the South Pole, and uh, the Earth is deemed to spin around that axis. And what direction does it spin from? What is the direction of spin? Anticlockwise. Dash to east. Anticlockwise as seen from where? West to east. West to east. As seen from seen the top. As seen from top. As seen from top of what? North, North, pole, North, sir. Pole, sir. North, North pole, sir. North pole. North pole. Okay. Yeah, this is very important uh, for you to understand. But from when seen from the top of the North Pole, uh, it uh, it rotates anticlockwise. When seen from the South Pole up, then you see it moving clockwise. Uh, and this is important because when you do the celestial sphere, you will need to understand why uh, the apparent motion um, of the stars and the heavenly bodies move from east to west. Right. Uh, Sauro, you had a question. Good afternoon. Sir. Good afternoon, sir. Moderator here, sir. Yeah, hi. No questions in chat, sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Okay. 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 Some of the things, uh, uh, you know, the axis, of course, cuts through the Earth's surface at the North Pole. And uh, viewed from above the North Pole, yes, the Earth is seen to rotate anti clockwise. And we refer to this direction of rotation as easterly. And important thing to keep in mind is that the axis is perpendicular to the plane of the equator. Okay, we all know what equator is. It's one of the great circles. That brings us to some more imaginary lines on the globe. Straightforward, isn't it? Now we know what the equator is. It's a great circle that is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Fine. Small circles are parallel. Uh, I mean, uh, parallel uh, parallels running parallel to the equator are known as parallels of latitude. And meridians are lines drawn from north pole to south pole. They are semi-great circles. And if you notice. They all cut the equator at right angles. Perpendicular. They are perpendicular to the equator, correct. And in fact, they are perpendicular to all the parallels of latitude also. Now, while we refer to the equator as one of the datums, that is a reference uh, line, similar meridians have a reference line or a datum called the prime meridian and all of us know this is the greenwich meridian passing through the greenwich observatory in uk and uh, the meridian that passes through wherever you are or wherever your ship is is called the local meridian or observers meridian okay that brings us to uh, coordinates. We have, somebody spoke about latitude and longitude and uh, of course I think you, you have done enough of navigation to know that latitudes and longitudes are angles. They are not lines. Okay. So far we have been dealing with lines in terms of equator, meridians, parallels of latitude. Now we are dealing with angles. Okay. Uh, read through that definition of latitude. It is uh, sort of, uh, it has stood the test of time. Uh, it is the angle subtended at the center of the earth by the arc of the meridian, which is contained between the equator and the parallel of latitude passing through either the ship or the observer. Is that is that uh, quite clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. And by the same uh, token, longitude is the angle subtended by the arc of the equator contained between the prime meridian and the meridian passing through the ship or the observer. Okay. Now, 
going back to latitude the naming of the latitude is quite obvious north or south depending on uh, which side of the hemisphere the observer is longitude again any observer meridian which is which is lying to the east of the greenwich meridian that longitude is named easterly or east and if it is lying to the west if that is if the observer is lying to the west of the greenwich meridian it is a westerly longitude okay now let us deal with our sense of direction and this is where i find many uh, many fundamentals being uh, lost uh, during various interviews um, again whenever we talk of direction we will talk about uh, our direction with respect to something else otherwise uh, in the vast open sea it doesn't make any sense to give a name to a direction so we start with a datum or a reference line anything that is going north that is wherever you are on the surface of the earth if you were to follow the meridian to the north pole that, that is the direction of the north okay and all angles all directions are measured with reference to the north now there are various ways of measuring that angle but one is the cardinal the other is the quadrantal and of course the famous 360 degree notation uh, the olden days they used to follow the cardinal method north north by east north north east and so on um subsequently we have gone on to the 360 degree three figure notation which is far more convenient uh, and for the purpose of uh, using of your traverse tables you need to be able to convert a three figure notation to a quadrantal notation now how i wonder if you guys know what a quadrantal uh, representation of uh, direction is yes or yes not? sir yes sir yes sir north yes, sir, 45 know. degree east like that all we make a south 40 degree east south 40 degree west we take always from north and south okay you always take with reference to north and south so for example yes, uh, let me pop a question if your course or your heading is 330 how would you describe it in the quadrantal format north 30 degree west sir yes north sir north 30 degree west, west. okay yeah. fine so that is understood now how would you guys if i were to ask you to define true course just looking at the picture will you be able to define it for me anybody wants to take a shot from to true north sir yeah i am asking uh, what is the true course please define the true course of a ship or true heading of a ship. So it is the angle measured uh, yeah, clockwise time? from the true, true north uh, between ship heading and the true north okay fair enough and uh, by the same token suppose i asked you to define the gyro course so zero north up to the ship heading okay measured clockwise yes sir measured clockwise excellent and magnetic course so magnetic north yes, sir magnetic north, north measured clockwise heading. up to the ship heading okay and then that brings us to compass north yes sir exactly yes sir all right so why is there a difference between gyro north and true north and what is our idea of true north because there uh, is an error in gyro sir there is an error in gyro okay true north is the direction of your meridian that is very clear and uh, gyro north can sometimes be off true north because there is a inherent gyro error and it's usually a fixed error half a degree 1 degree 1 and 1/2 degrees um on either side of true north now what is this magnetic north why is it different from true north so because earth also opposes the uh, characteristics of a magnet so there is uh, they are magnetic poles magnetic south pole and magnetic north pole okay which okay so the magnetic axis is not in the same direction as the earth's rotational axis axis of rotation there is a there is an angle between the two and that is the reason why the compass the magnetic compass points to a north different from true north
excuse me sir yeah one question from jay singh sir yeah during taking a sight of star how to identify that it is a star or not how to identify whether it's a star or not a star or not yes without using the uh, uh, without using the uh, star finder is that the question can i repeat again sir i think yeah uh, i think the, this is from the question paper how do you identify uh, a star uh, and how how do you differentiate it from some other uh, say for example a planet without using a star finder yes sir okay that that is coming into the realm of uh, celestial sphere really but uh, we will get to it when we do but uh, primarily you know your your star finder is uh, one way of finding out where your which your stars are the other way is to use your constellations and your knowledge of constellations to figure out which star is there and the third is if you know your own position i'm sorry guys i'm i'm moving a little bit off terrestrial navigation uh, is you have your own position whether it is a dr or estimated position or gps position based on that you can work back what should be uh, the altitude of a given star or if you if you have the altitude and the azimuth of a particular star you can work back through spherical trigonometry and arrive at what exactly is this uh, star what is the name of the star from your nautical almanac but i will i will not go into that area right now because that will deflect us from this okay uh errors we already defined uh, gyro error as the angle between true north and gyro north and the compass between compass north and true north as the compass error now compass error has two uh compass error has two uh, components variation and deviation anybody wants to hazard a guess what variation is and why what uh, deviation is variation is, is the angle from the true north to the magnetic north and deviation is the from magnetic north to the compass north and uh, this variation is named how high and low No sir, not no, sir. high. East, east, east or west? East or west? East or west? Okay, east or west. High and low is in zero. Now, high and low is zero. Okay. Sorry, I couldn't catch you. Hello. I think I lost you. high and low is the zero error yeah zero error is uh, is named the high or low now suppose uh, your your true course is 342 and your zero course is 343 i repeat your true course is 342 and your zero course is 343 1 degree high 1 degree high One degree, one degree high. high. Yes. Okay. Sir. Good. And where is the gyro north with respect to true north? Is it to the east or to the west of true north? East, east. Zero, zero, east. one. Sir, zero, zero, one. It is east of true north. Think again. <laughs> again, sir. West of true north. I will. Your your true course is three <coughs> four two. Your gyro course is three four three. True course is west of zero. Uh, west of uh, true course. West of. Sir, west. Would be one degree west. Yeah. So zero north, zero north is one degree west of true north. Are we agreed on that? Yes. Yes, sir. No. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. uh we already understood uh, the reason for this uh variation it changes with the location of the ship on the earth okay this is because the magnetic axis and the earth's geographical axis are at an angle to one another 
Okay. Therefore, the magnetic meridians coming from the South Pole to the North Pole, uh, they are not aligned to the geographic meridians. And that is the reason why you have variation. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, you obtain variation from your hydrographic chart or from variation chart. So those of you who have been on ships, you would have seen the variation for any given location. Now, one question. If the heading of the ship changes, does the variation change? No, sir. No, no, sir. No, sir. No, no, negative. Negative. Okay. No, no, sir. Variation is uh, pertaining to a particular area, not, uh, not pertaining to the heading of the visitor. Okay. Excellent. Now, let's talk about deviation. Of course, uh, compass, when the compass north lies either to the east or west of the magnetic north, now mind you, the reference here for deviation is magnetic north, okay? And the compass north lies either to the west or to the east, then it is said to have a deviation, okay? Why does deviation happen? So as the ship head changes, deviation changes. Agreed. But why does deviation happen in the first place? Due to the ship's own magnetic properties. So, due to the ship's internal factor, like steel and ship also possesses magnetic properties. So, okay. deviation is occurs due to the ship's magnetic properties. Fair enough. It's caused due to the deflection of the standard magnetic compass from the magnetic magnetic north, and it is. Cost due to the field, the magnetic field of the ship's steel hull and all the steel components. And the amount of the deflection varies with two things. One is the strength of the field at the site of the compass binnacle. Usually it is on the monkey island, your magnetic compass, standard compass. At that location, whatever is the strength and direction of the ship's magnetism. Ship has its own magnetic field which is interfering with the magnetic field of the earth. And that is causing the deflection in the magnetic needle. And it changes. I will not go into the details of why it changes, but the heading, every time the heading changes, the deviation will also change somewhat. It has a high and a low. It follows a sinusoidal curve. Okay. So we understand again, uh, the notation for deviation and variation is east or west. Whereas for gyro error, it is high or low. Okay, that brings me to compass bearing. We have talked about course, true course and the compass course. Now, what is the difference between a course and a bearing? Anyone? Course is the angle between the ship's head uh, and the true north, whereas bearing is something relative. Uh, that is uh, the angle between the ship's head and uh, to something relative. Okay, fair enough. Not not good enough though. Anybody else wants to take a shot? The course related to the ship, sir, and bearing may be related to the observer. To the observer, sir. Mm, not satisfied. I know what you're trying course to say. Is, Bearing is, is the position line, sir. The position line. Course is related to the actual uh, direction we are moving and bearing is related to the uh, observing position. Of the okay, okay. Just take a look at that picture and uh, try to define it in terms of angles. What exactly is the ship's course? Is the angle between what and what? Suppose the angle between the two north, 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 north and six heading. Suppose the angle between the two north and six heading. North and the the, agreed. The, the angle between the true north and the ship's head is the ship's course. Okay. And, and the angle between the, the angle uh, between true north and uh, the lighthouse is the uh, bearing of the lighthouse. Bearing line. Ah, good. Yeah, I got the, the line of bearing. Yeah, no, no, that's okay. I, uh, we <laughs> 
different sometimes. <laughs> uh, the, so, so from the ship, if you take the bearing of an external object, okay, the true course is the angle between true north and the ship's four and a half line. We all know that. Measured clockwise in 360 degree, three figure notation. But true bearing of an external object, it's always an external object, is the angle between true north and the bearing line or line of bearing to that particular object as measured from the ship. Okay? So, anybody wants to now tell me what re relative bearing is? Relative bearing. It's the angle between yeah, the ship's heading and the line of the bearing. Line of Perfect. Between the ship's fore and off line and the bearing, line of bearing to that object as measured on the compass. Excellent. Now, how many of you have done this on ships? Used a transit bearing or leading lights to verify your compass error? Yes, sir. You have done it, huh? Yes, sir. Okay. See, on, on the hydrographic chart, uh, you sometimes have what is known as, uh, what are known as leading lights or lead lights. Usually, they are placed, located in such a way as to lead the ship into the port on a very, very narrow channel so that, uh, because there is not enough uh, safe room, safe navigable passage on either side. So, you follow the lead lights and come safely into the harbor. Okay. But you need not only be going into the harbor, even if you cross this lead light, you know, the hydrographic chart or even the egg disk will give you the location of these lead lights and also the true bearing. Okay. What they should bear from, from your ship or their position line. And if you happen to cross, in other words, when from the bridge of the ship, if you see these two leading lights in a single line, that means that you are on that line of bearing. At that point, if you take the compass bearing and compare it with the chartered true bearing, you will be able to ascertain the error very easily if there is an error. Agreed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, you, you just have to be anywhere on that line. You need not only be heading towards that those lead lights. Mm -hmm. The moment you see both those lead lights in a single line, you immediately go on your bridge wing, take a, a bearing on the compass with your azimuth circle, and you will obtain a particular bearing. Compare it with the chartered uh, true bearing. If there is a difference, that is your compass error. Now, how many of you know this cadet rule? If you want to convert your compass bearing to true bearing or compass course to true course, have you heard of the cadet rule? C-A-D-E-T. Yes, sir. Compass best. Uh, error best. Compass to true. No. You just draw write C-A-D-E-T. Cadet. From C to T. Compass to true. Add easterly. Easterly error should be added. True to compass, you subtract easterly. Okay, co compass least error is that is also another way. If your compass bearing or compass course is less than the true course, then your error is east that many degrees. And your compass best that means if your compass course or your compass uh, bearing is more than the true bearing, then your error is best by that many degrees. Okay, position line. Why do I say it is a reciprocal of the bearing line? Because your position is lying uh, in the in, uh, bearing of that line, sir. It is the reverse. Bearing is from your ship to that object. Position line is from the object to your ship. And what do you mean by reciprocal? It, it simply means reverse direction or opposite direction. 
So suppose your bearing is uh, 0, 4, 0. Bearing of a particular lighthouse is 0, 4, 0. The position line drawn from the lighthouse will be in what direction? 2, 2, so 0. We add 180 degrees. We will add 180 degrees. Add 180 degrees. Yes, sir. Okay. Suppose your bearing is 2, 2, 2 0, 0, sir. I'm sorry? Let me repeat. Uh, suppose your bearing is 3, 2, 1. Bearing from a ship to a particular tank, as you can see on the picture. Suppose the bearing is 3, 2, 1. Or call it, okay, 3, 2, 0 for comfort. What will be the position line from the tank to your ship? So it will be 3 to 1 minus 180 or opposite bearing. Opposite bearing. 140. 140. Okay. 140. Okay. Now, remember another thing. You can see, you can go to your chart or your uh, electronic chart or your paper chart. And after taking the bearing, you can draw the position line in reverse from that particular object. If you identified that object correctly. All that it tells you is that you are somewhere on the position line. It doesn't tell you your position. It only gives you what is known as a position line. Your ship is somewhere on that line. You don't know exactly where. You need more than one position line. 140, sir. One. Sorry? 140. You're, you're, okay. Thank you. Yeah, 320 minus 180. 140. Now, since the position line tells you only... Only your position, uh, sorry, uh, since it tells you only where you are, uh, it doesn't tell you where you are on the on the line. It only tells you that you are somewhere on the position line. You need more than one position line to tell you where you are, to, to fix your ship. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. Now, range of a land feature or any particular object, uh, you pick it up from the radar, isn't it? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, that range uh, can also be drawn in reverse from that particular lighthouse or from that particular object. You take a compass and draw an arc of a circle. That becomes your position circle or arc of the position circle. And you can, you know that you are somewhere on that arc because you know that is your range, but you don't know exactly where. So, you need one more position line or one more position circle in order to fix the position of your ship. This is straightforward? Yes, sir. The point of intersections of PLs and PCs taken at the same time, that is important, simultaneously, is called fixing the position of the ship or a, or a fix. The more number of position lines you have, the better it is. Okay, now what happens when you cannot obtain multiple uh, position lines or position circle at the same time? Then you do, do running fix. Sorry, yeah, go ahead. We do running fix. Sir. You do running fix. Now, how many of you have done a running fix actually? On a, on a yes, sir. We have done. Yeah, done. Yes, sir. Okay, how easy? Already done. Okay. You have done it on the charts in the, uh, the class, but how many of you are doing it on the ship? Those of you who are on the ship. I've done it. I've done it. Okay, fair enough. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, here is a, uh, here is a problem that you have a 30-minute interval between two position lines. You have taken the first one at 0640. And the next one at 0710. You've got two position lines. How do you fix your position? We have to shift the uh, parallelism at that second uh, position line to the first one. Then we get the fix. Okay. So the way to do this is the first PL obtained at 0640 and second one is at 0710. We know that the vessel is steaming 280 true at 40 knots. And uh, let us say we add a certain drift uh, to that and you say 196. So that is a speed triangle that you're seeing here. 
and you select any point on this position line. Can you see my cursor? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah, okay. You select any point on the on the position, first position line, and run your speed speed triangle through that. Okay. Run your speed triangle. This is your uh, course steered and uh, you know ship speed or engine speed as they call it. And this is your uh, set and drift for half an hour. And this is your course made good or the ground vector. And if you were really here, then you would be there. Okay. But the only way to know where you were at 0710 is to transfer this position line so that it passes through that particular point and see where it cuts the second position line. So that is not your position, that is. Can you see that? You are literally transferring your position line. This is your transferred position line from 0640. You transferred your position line by an amount equal to that much. Sir, we can do easily terrestrial observation here. Like running pitch is uh, important in middle of the sea where we found a boy or something, or we can do it uh, nearby shore. Um, you will actually, okay, that is a, a practical question. A running fix uh, is something that you often do for celestial navigation. That's the reason I'm uh, you know, walking you through this staggered PL. Uh, sometimes you get position lines at uh, over a space of half an hour or one hour, or even sometimes two, three hours. Sometimes you take a morning uh, sight of the sun, and then you take a meridian altitude of the sun uh, around noon. And then you have to run the morning parallel of the position line obtained uh, in the morning by that many uh, that many miles in that direction of the ship and the intersection the point of intersection of the two will give you a noon, noon position in case you don't have a gps okay so it is useful for celestial observation but it is also used during coastal passages like like what you've seen here in the absence of a gps as your secondary backup position fixing system you can use this uh, running fix concept. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Let's move on to uh, understanding the distance. On land, we have uh, units of kilometers, uh, miles, meters, whatever. On, on sea, at sea, we have the nautical mile. Okay, and a cable is one tenth of a nautical mile. I think all of us know that. What exactly is a nautical mile? How how did we arrive at the? You know, we know that it is equal to one thousand eight hundred and fifty-two meters or six thousand eighty feet. Uh, how did we arrive at this one eight five two meters? A minute of the. Good. The minute. Yeah. Can you expand on that? So it is simply one minute of geographic latitude. One minute of geographic latitude. Okay. Yeah. Now, if the earth was a perfect sphere, which we know it is not, it's slightly oblate. And then we could have defined the one minute of arc of the meridian or equator as being equal to one nautical mile. So any arc on the surface of a sphere or, or the, on the earth, assuming that the earth is a perfect sphere, if it subtends an angle of one minute, that is one sixtieth of a degree at the center of the earth, then that is a nautical mile. But the earth is an oblate spheroid and the equatorial radius is slightly different from the polar radius. So one minute as you can see here, one minute of arc covers so much distance on this meridian. If you go to a higher latitude, the same one minute of arc covers a lesser distance. Okay? Average value, sir. So, the difference is... It's a mean value. 
yeah 18 1855 meters uh, uh, at the equator and 1849 uh, it's just 6 meters off so a standard distance of 1852 has been adopted as the length of a nautical mile for all practical purposes we can consider it to be almost equal to 1 minute of arc you know meridian or equator or whatever anybody wants to try give a shot at defining what a dlat is by the way any any questions on uh, distance or direction or course or bearing so far sir sir here we have some questions sir yeah uh, mr tilottama shivakumar asked that they are found by cadet rules sorry they are, they are found by cadet rules uh huh and one more question is there sir from varun why is bearing needed okay cadet rule uh, sh- should i expand on the cadet rule repeat it one more time that's what he is asking is it yes sir and okay. few more questions are there sir can i ask sir um okay go ahead sir mr vishal have doubts sir did mm-hmm. not understand the relative wing bearing so please repeat the particular team okay and one more question is from mr srinivasan ravichandran mm. difference between course and heading okay course and heading that's it sir okay thank you sir let me start with the last question first uh, there is no difference between course and heading heading is how the ship is headed the fore and aft line of the ship we use the word course to describe uh, the direction of travel of the ship okay uh, otherwise uh, course and heading for all practical purposes is uh, one and the same and uh, cadet rule is simply i mean you know it's a thumb rule when you want to uh, when you got uh, let us say a compass bearing or a compass course and you also uh, have a compass error you have found your compass error to be let's say 2 degrees east and your compass bearing to be 141 so what is your true bearing when you actually plot the bearing on the chart let me repeat 143 form of a numerical question your compass bearing Uh, never mind what kind of a compass uh, let us say magnetic compass itself let us say your compass bearing is 141 degrees and you found that your compass error is 2 degrees east now how would you obtain your true bearing from the compass bearing how would you obtain your true bearing compass to 2 So by adding the error by adding, adding the adding. compass error. error east compass best error west okay that is one good thumb rule uh, compass least but we don't know here in this case which is least we just know that the error is you know 2 degrees east and giving you 141 as a compass bearing and giving you 2 degrees as the easterly error and i'm asking you to find out what is the true bearing of that particular light for you to 143 143 143 so degree yeah so when when you have to convert when you have to convert compass bearing to true bearing you add easterly error that is how the cadet rule comes about c a d e t compass to true you draw a line or an arc from c to t from the first letter to the last letter compass to true in between you see a d e add east did you get it yes sir have i cleared that uh, cadet rule by the same token if you are yes, converting true true bearing to compass bearing you subtract easterly error if the error is east and you and you are required to convert 
true coarse or true bearing to compass bearing then you start we will subtract east error yeah you will subtract east error from true bearing to get the compass bearing clear yes sir and you will do exactly the opposite with west of compass to true if you will add sir in west you have to subtract in west from compass bearing to true bearing if you have a west error error is west then you subtract the west error from the compass bearing to obtain the true bearing is that okay yes sir clear okay sir? then somebody asked about the uh, relative bearing right okay there is a definition of relative bearing relative bearing is relative to your ship's heading the bearing of that lighthouse with respect to the ship's head so relative bearing of an external is the angle between the ship's fore and aft line and the bearing line to that object as measured on the compass clear yes sir so if you are given a relative bearing uh, and you are given the ship's course you add the two you you will get the true bearing of that uh, lighthouse excuse me sir yes ma'am can you explain story of the nautical mile okay uh, all right now this uh, diagram i mean this is an exaggerated uh, spheroid the difference of uh, equatorial and uh, polar diameter is not so much but for the sake of understanding it i have uh, exaggerated it a bit now if you were to see can you see my cursor yes yes sir yes yes sir now this particular uh arc this arc is subtending an angle of 1 minute at the center of the earth now this arc is also subtending 1 minute at the center of the earth okay now because this is closer this radius is less than this radius obviously this distance will be more than this distance so one minute of arc will not uniformly give you the same distance if you measure it in meters and centimeters it will not give you the same distance near the equator as it gives you near the poles in other words as you go from the equator towards either the north pole or the south pole you will find that one minute of arc is giving you slightly very slightly lesser distance which is why we have to define this very clearly exactly is it uh, you know one minute gives you an arc of 1855 meters near the equator and 1849 at the poles so we have taken an average distance of 1852 as the length of the nautical mile okay we need to kill ourselves about uh, geographic uh, uh, you know lat and uh, geometric lat we we, do, we need not do that we simply say the standard distance of 1852 has been adopted as the uh, measure of a distance at on on sea clear clear sir thank you okay uh, let me quickly run you through uh, difference of latitude anybody wants to take a shot at what d lat yes sir the lat is the is the angle at the center or the arc yeah. of the meridian to the parallels of latitude passing through two places excellent those two places a and b when a ship is in uh, doing a voyage it will be the 
point of uh, departure and point of arrival, isn't it? As you see, the ship is traveling along that meridian. In this case, from point A to point B, or here, point A to point B. Yes, it is the D lat is the angle at the center subtended by the arc of the meridian. Very good between point A and point B. And it is named north or south. D lat is given a name of north or south depending on the pole. Uh, towards which the ship is traveling. Now, from A to B, tell me the ship is traveling towards which pole? Uh, to the south pole, sir. South, right. pole. south, pole, south pole. South pole, sir. From, from A to B, the, the ship is traveling towards the south pole and therefore the direction of travel is southerly. And therefore, we name the DLAT as south. Okay? Yes, sir. And see the last line. Numerically, it is equal to the difference of the latitudes. Assuming that uh, both the latitudes are in the same hemisphere, the latitude of point A and latitude of point B, the difference of these two, these two latitudes, that means this angle minus this angle will be your DLAT. Can you see that? Yes, sir. Okay. Similarly, let us deal with D long. In this case, this is the prime meridian. I am I'm showing the cursor. It's not uh, labeled there. This is the prime meridian passing through this point. And this is the latitude of departure from start point. And this is the end, sorry, this is the end uh, meridian. This is the starting meridian. So in other words, somewhere on this meridian, it need not be only here. Somewhere on this meridian, a ship has started its voyage and ended it on this meridian. Okay? So, how would you define D-Long? So, D-Long is the shorter arc of equator or small angle at the pole contained between two uh, pairs of meridians. Two? Pairs of meridians. Parallel of meridians. Meridians are not parallel. Two meridians, that's all. The, the start meridian and the end meridian. Or you can call it the departure and the arrival meridians. Okay. So it's not a good idea to use the word departure here because it, it tends to confuse. But start meridian and stop meridian. So somewhere on this meridian, the ship has started a voyage and ended up somewhere on this meridian. The D-long is that angle at the center of the earth subtended by the arc of the equator between this meridian and this meridian, starting meridian and finishing meridian. And numerically, if both the meridians are on the same side of the prime meridian, that means both of them have, in this case, east, name of east, then D long is nothing but longitude of meridian A minus meridian B. Sorry, longitude of A minus longitude of B. That is your D-long numerically. And we name it along the direction of travel. Suppose the ship is traveling from this point to this point, then the direction is easterly, isn't it? Or if it is traveling from this point to this point, the direction of travel, general direction of travel is easterly. So we name the D-long as east. Sir, what if we cross anti-meridian, 180 degree, uh, then uh, the same direction will be there, like it yeah. is going more easterly, or it will uh, shift, like it is going from east to the hemisphere to the west, so it will be west. No, no, no. You still, you just go by the thumb rule. What is my direction of travel? It doesn't matter that you have crossed a prime meridian or an uh, anti-meridian or, uh, I mean, I think you are talking of the international date line. It doesn't matter. Your direction of travel is what gives the D-long its name. D-long will be still the name direction. Sorry? D-long will be still the? D-long will be the same direction in which we are traveling. Traveling. Whether right. it's the the ideal and uh, 180 degree. Like. It doesn't matter what you have crossed. Yes, correct. Absolutely. Because your direction of travel will determine the naming of both the D-lat and the D-long. It doesn't matter which hemisphere you are on or which side of the prime meridian you are on or which side of the ideal you are on. 
your direction of travel will determine the name for your d long and d lat okay clear yes sir good to go yes sir yes sir i'll take over the I think we should stop now. Um, uh, uh, yes, sir. It's time now, sir. It's time. Yeah, it's past five. I still have a um, uh, departure to cover, but uh, we will deal with that in the next class. Uh, you can take five more minutes, sir. Can I? Wouldn't be an issue. Yes, sir. Sure. Yes, I sir. See. You okay. can have five minutes. Five minutes more. Okay, then. So, who wants to have a shot at the definition of departure? anybody simply departure is the east west distance yeah east west displacement is east west shortest path in the ship's voyage perfect perfect east west uh, shortest east west displacement of a ship's voyage is uh, departure so for the moment let us just consider the ship as traveling uh, along east or west direction let's not complicate it by saying northeast or northwest so you can see that as the ship travels let follow my cursor say it travels from one location to another location on a on a east west direction in this case it is going west okay now you will find it is gone from 75 degrees longitude to 90 degrees longitude which means it has had a d long of 15 degrees agree yes sir yes sir And fifteen yes, degrees. Fifteen degrees. Name is west. Name of the D long is west because it is traveling from this point to this point in a westerly direction. Now, by definition, departure is the east-west displacement. It is not the D long. D long is this along the meridian. But if it is going at thirty degrees north latitude along that parallel, that would be its departure. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, yes, sir. For the same d long, you have different departures. As you go higher and higher up the latitude, you will find that the amount of distance to be covered is lesser and lesser, even though you are covering the same amount of d long. And that is obviously because all the meridians are bunching up together at the poles, north or south pole. Converging. Converging at the pole, sir. Converging at the pole. Okay. Now, departure is also named similar to D long in the direction of travel. Okay. And what we notice is for the same D long, the departure reduces as you go to higher latitudes. Higher latitude towards either the North Pole or towards the South Pole, the amount of east-west displacement reduces for the same amount of D long. now when d lat is greater than 0 that means we are now moving across parallels of latitude what do we do in this case suppose the journey has both a north south component as well as a east west component like in this case the ship is traveling from this parallel of latitude to that parallel of latitude okay so it has a d lat which is very easy to find out because this d lat and this d lat both are same however this departure is higher than this departure so which parallel of latitude do we take do we take this starting parallel of latitude or do we take the finish parallel of latitude mean mean the mean mean sir okay mean is simply this latitude in degrees and minutes plus this latitude in degrees and minutes divided by 2 2 okay in case the arrival and departure or or arrival and finish uh, sorry um, starting and uh, finishing latitudes are on other sides of the equator initial and final yeah initial okay sorry initial and final uh, latitudes are on opposite sides of the equator you take Difference and divide by two. 
Okay. So we measure the departure along the mean latitude. So what whatever is the mean latitude, you measure the departure in nautical. Remember, departure alone you measure in nautical miles, not in degrees and minutes. Okay. Distance. So in distance, yeah, in units of distance, in nautical miles and cables. So that is the departure for this particular journey along this green line. Okay, so gentlemen, thank you for your time. Uh, that brings me to the end of this presentation. We will deal with the concept of mid-lat and uh, uh, some numericals and uh, marketer sailing subsequently, the construction of the marketer charts at the next session. For now, uh, happy to take any residual questions that they may be. I just come back to the previous slide, please. Yeah. Go on. Sir, is their departure uh, depend upon the road or like it is dependable on the rotation of Earth or something? No. Departure. Does, it, does, the, does, the, rotation, of does the rotation of Earth uh, affect departure? No, it does not because your ship is uh, rotating along with the Earth, isn't it? So, as far as uh, uh, we are concerned, uh, observers on the Earth or the ship, as far as we are concerned, the Earth is not moving. It's only our journey that is taken into account. For terrestrial. It level. only depends upon the initial and the final position. I think so. Yes, yes. For terrestrial navigation, initial position, final position, and we measure the east-west displacement and the north-south displacement. North-south displacement we call as uh, D lag, and the east-west displacement we call it call it as departure. The only complication with departure is that if it, if you're moving across levels of latitude, then you have to take the mean latitude. In fact, you should take something called the mid latitude. Uh, that difference is there because of the oblique spheroid shape of that. But we'll come to that uh, later. For now, we will be happy to measure the departure along the mean lat. That is the parallel of latitude, parallel of mean latitude, whatever distance is there between the two meridians, that is your east-west. Departure will be always east-west, no, sir? Departure is always named east or west, correct. Uh, sir, you said the departure is east-west displacement. What is displacement? Uh, is it the same as distance or something else? It is a distance. It is distance only. Why I am saying displacement is, you see, we use uh, this length. Can you see the cursor? Yeah. Length we used to call as the distance. Okay. So... Can't we say displacement is the shortest path between two points? Displacement is also, yeah, this is, that is uh, when you're talking like, uh, uh, you know, vector quantity, yes, it is the shortest place. But uh, frankly, let's go back to the departure definition itself. It is the east-west, okay, you can say it is the east-west distance. If you don't want to use the word displacement, you can say it is the east-west distance along the parallel of latitude or along the mean parallel of latitude contained between the initial and the final meridian. Okay, sir. Got it. That does satisfy? Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any more? No, sir. Satisfied. Excellent. All right. Uh, please share your feedback, uh, guys. Take down that uh, email ID and... Uh, over